Mr. Luce. My name is Edward Paramount. Ah, Sir Paramount, I've been expecting you. Do please come in. I knew you were a collector, Mr. Luce, but I didn't know you were also a photographer. Since you stubbornly refused to sell me the Paramount, uh, I'll just have to settle for a photograph of it. Would you part with such a celebrated diamond as this? Especially if it were named for you. I must go. You're not leaving so soon. I have an appointment. Oh, but first come to the garden. I want you to see my very latest acquisition. Ah, yes, the Rodin. I'm afraid I don't see any sculptures. Hey, what are you doing? Oh! my uncle's car parked in front of the house of Mr. Luce, the collector. My uncle had an appointment with him the day he disappeared. His secretary sent me some documents about the subject of their meeting. Oh, there's Luce now, going inside. I'll get back to you. Eight whole days with no word from Sophia. Something's wrong. Gentlemen, are you Mr. Luce? Simon Luce? Well, my name is Bob Moran, and this is Bill Ballantyne. Would you be so kind as to let us have a word with you? Certainly. Come in, gentlemen. Now, let me get this straight. You're looking for someone who deals in diamonds, someone named Paramount. Yes, that's right. Sadly, I'm unacquainted with this individual. I've never even heard of the fellow. Your answer surprises me, Mr. Luce, an avid collector like you. I collect great works of art, Mr. Moran, not diamonds. Come on, we know he was here, and we also know that his niece, who was investigating his disappearance, came to pay you a visit. So you've never met Sir Paramount? I have not. You're lying, Mr. Luce. Don't these papers mean anything to you? Your unamusing little games are beginning to annoy me. I have nothing further to say to you, gentlemen. We're not finished. Sit down, please. Before her disappearance, his niece, Miss Sophia Paramount, received these documents which prove that you knew the man. This is your signature, is it not? And aren't you the collector who desires to purchase the Paramount, no matter what the price? All right, I admit it. I lied to you. I had my reasons, though. I hope they're good ones, for your sake. But first, I want to show you something. What you were about to see will prove my sincerity and good faith beyond any doubt. Please, after you, gentlemen. Not so fast. Hey, they let go of me. So this is the Paramount. Give me that. Give it to me right now. You thieves. Well, well. I didn't know our friend the Collector was moonlighting as a magician. And not just any magician. This one can make himself disappear into thin air. Yes, but by accident. What do you mean, Commander? When he threw himself at me, he wasn't kidding around. Did we 
we just go through that thing? I'm afraid so. We're a long way from Luce's garden. Robbie Burns, what's this? Well, well. It's Mr. Luce. It's not my doing, I swear to you. I swear it. All right, if it isn't your doing, then get us out of here, Houdini. Well, uh, uh, The door. Where is the door, Luce? Uh, there is none. No door. All right, then you're going to tell us how to find our way back to this gentleman's nice car, which is parked in front of your house. I... I don't know. <coughs> Mr. Luce, where are we? I, I believe we are in... a parallel universe. In 36 years, no one has ever returned. And that's how you unburdened yourself of Sir Paramount and his niece. I wanted the Paramount. And his niece was too curious. Rosette was the same one as on the front of your house. Congratulations, Mr. Moran. Very few people have been astute enough to notice. The one that faces into the street must serve as some kind of signal. To who? I have no idea. Perhaps to those who know about this parallel universe. Then that would mean they'd be able to come here. And if people know how to get in, then there must be a way to get out. We must closely examine the Rosette. You're forgetting, Mr. Luce, that we came here to find Sophia Paramount and her uncle. And we won't be leaving until we do. You hear that? I don't like these shrill cries one bit. You go with Luce while I take a closer look. Commander! We'll meet over there, near the barrier.
big bunch of bird brains had better watch out. Do you think this pretty quick cage can stop me for long? You pack of putrid pigeons, lousy feather brain, grub digging, wear me that! Greetings, guard, old friend. How's the hunting? You're out of your mind, Gara! Addressing one of the guards like that? supposed to be here. Silence. Go join the others. But I swear to you, I'm not supposed to be here. Please listen to me. Silence! I, I... Bonny surprise. Why, hello there, guard old pal. Whoa! Don't do that. I saw at once that you weren't a real guard. All of them are left-handed. And besides, no guard ever had shoes as nice as yours. My name is Gara. The people seem quite happy. Are they always like this? Only during the games. What kind of games are they? Oh, something the guards invented to keep the villagers occupied. Every year, the prisoners from this village compete against prisoners from the neighboring village, and the survivors become the new villagers. That's the law in Ananke. And you've done nothing to change that law. I did try to change things a long time ago, but... In Ananke, people have become resigned. has seen her. Who knows, your friend Sophia may have succeeded in crossing the Garden of the Dead. Something tells me that she's here. Who are all these villagers? We all arrived here by accident, or to be more precise, by mistake. And we're all responsible for the smooth running of the village. Are you kept here as slaves? Yes. We aren't bound up in chains or tortured, but we all know what would happen to us if we should attempt to escape. You see over there? That's where the guards live, along with Ornus, their leader. They don't seem too dangerous. Are there many of them? 30 or 40? I don't know. No one really knows for sure. But why do you allow this? Everyone who has tried to resist them is now dead. Those who remain have decided that it's better to simply accept their fate. That's what Ananke means, submission to fate. But fate only exists if you believe in it. That belief is making you slaves. Gara, together we can change all that. What are they doing? They've come to see the prisoners and to place their bets. The heavyweight from the village won't stand a chance against this behemoth. I'm with you. We'd be crazy not to bet every cent on him. 
Yes, indeed. He's quite a specimen. Probably dumb as a box of rocks, but I'll bet those arms could uproot trees. For these games, brains are optional anyway. Hello, Commander. Am I glad to see you? He's a friend. I can get out of here anytime I want. Patience, Bill. It may be possible to free a prisoner, but trying to save a woman who may or may not even be here is absurd. Come on, Doc. For once, someone's come up with a plan to change things around here. Speaking for myself, I'm more than ready to take the risk. We could put all our trust in Bob. Count me in. I have no intention of spending my life here. Nor have I. Me neither. Then what are we waiting for? It's time to make a bold move. What exactly happens here the day of the games? All of those stinking guards come to the stadium. That means there's no one at the prison. Why would we want to attack an empty prison? Is there any way we can get gunpowder in the village? Gunpowder? I doubt it very much. But since I'm the only doctor in the village, I take care of Ornis. He lets me keep a little nitroglycerin on hand, just in case. So how many folks have you gotten rid of in that death garden of yours? Tell me the truth, Luce. In 36 years, at least a hundred. If they're all here, I'd hate to be you tomorrow. Why's that? The games are tomorrow. You're gonna have to fight, you know. Psst. It's the first time I've seen these games of yours. Can you explain to me what's meant by those smoke signals over there? Fire! It's on fire! The village is burning! No, it's the prison! Hooray! Let it burn! Let it burn! In no time at all, Ornis will be history. We should be able to see everything from here. That'll give us a chance to see the hideous Ornis one last time before he's blown to smithereens. like all the others. Don't you agree, my angel? You might be in for a shock. One more arrow and you're done for. Hold your fire! Hold your fire! 
back. Take cover. Mr. Luce? Surely you remember me. I was one of your neighbors from Paris in the Marais. Yes. I recognize you. The guards' reign of terror has ended! Off to prison with them! Off to prison with them! Well, so long, Doc. What a pity you won't stay with us. Think of all the extraordinary things we could accomplish. We've got to find Sir Paramount. I've been saving this little item for a rainy day. I have a feeling you'll be needing it more than I will. Thank you, my friend. Wait a minute. Just hold that pose. are my uncle's initials, Edward Paramount. I'm positive this is his handwriting. Huh? After you, Commander. That rose ass again. We're still in a non cave, Bill. Look, he's left an obvious trail. He's alive. <gasps> we'll find him, Sophia. Great Scott! Look out behind you! Coming, Bill? Yeah, I'm coming. When I think I could be on my wee farm watching my chickens peck for bugs. Auditioning for a part as a human corkscrew, Bill. He's talented. But where would you find a bottle that size? Very funny.
Business here, man. I've never seen you around before. Oh, would you let me have that thing? I'd like to give it to someone. All right, but help me, will you? I wanted to give him a present for a long time. He'll be so happy. Hey, what about me? What's your name? Pest. And you? Bob. I have to go. See you, Bob. Say, wait! I'm looking for someone. Uh, gentlemen! A man was taken by Borold, but now he's most surely dead. Who's Borold? He gave you that? Maybe it was a ruse to discover our hideout. But he seems so nice. Why did you do this? You know the rules. It is forbidden to trust anyone. But I thought you'd be pleased, Tar. Well, fine. Who cares? Best. Wait. Best we stop here, Borold. These winged ones have become suspicious. At the slightest alarm, they pitch headlong into their burrows, and it's the devil's own work to catch them. You are right, faithful Ruland. It will not do to alarm our people, but they've lost a great deal of fervor. It is high time we offered another sacrifice to our god. Yes, it's been a long time since we allowed them to hear the words of great Sheikh Matan. <laughs> What's going on, little fella? Get out of my way! Easy now, I won't hurt you. Whoa! Oh. Oh. There, that's better. So you must be Pest's little sweetheart. How'd you know that? This is my lighter. They've kidnapped Pest! Who has? Borold, and another one. And I let them do it. <laughs> we mustn't abandon her. First, you must tell me who this Borold is. And then we're going to pay him a little visit. No one's ever returned from Barhold's camp. It's there, on the other side of the bridge. With you. No. Stay. It'll be safer if I go alone. <laughs> There's to be a meeting at my house in the next hour. Go and form the others. Right away, Master.
gathered you all here to tell you that Shekmaton has spoken to me. Praise the Shekmaton! Yes. He told me you must give me proof. Oh, it's time for a sacrifice. Proof of your love. Yeah! And of your faithfulness. Yeah! said to me, I want a human sacrifice. Do it quickly, for I am losing patience. We have the older prisoners just taking up room. No. I need them to work in the mines. We must build up mighty reserves of coal to the glory of Shakmaton. We have found someone who will surely please Shakmaton. Someone worthy of sacrifice. <laughs> Is the prison that way? Yes, it is. That way. Able to find Zor. Search the area near the footbridge. Perhaps friends of the Winged One are responsible. Zor couldn't have been overcome so easily. They'd need an inside helper. Might have been old Greybeard. I've never really trusted him. He's just a little too docile. At any rate, make sure the prisoner is well guarded. You, and you, come with me. One of Borold's men. Who are you? You're quite correct. I'm not one of Borold's men. I'm looking for a friend and for one of the flying creatures Borold has kidnapped. The man? They may have killed him already. As for the other, Borold often holds them prisoner in the temple to be offered as sacrifices to their so called god. What did you do to end up here? My name is Falcon. I was chief of this village. Everyone in line! What are you doing there, Falcon? You know you must keep in view of the guards. You have changed, Quantel. I work for the glory of Shekmaton. Get moving! Shekmaton. All of you have gone insane. What did you say? Prepare the whip for Falcon! that door's going to open. Come and help me unblock this passageway. What would you do without me? Zor. This is for the new prisoner. It was the master who sent me. You may go in. Revolver was trickier to smuggle in, but I know where it is. 
Why are you doing this? I've been playing their game for years. They're starting to suspect me now. Sooner or later, they'll kill me. As soon as Rulin learns how to work my equipment. On my own with this, I'm helpless. Together, we can get out of here. I know this place. The others will never track us down. Who are you? William Shane. But here, I'm known as Greybeard. Shane? The cat burglar? Yep. Specializing in the very finest sound systems. Radio Shane, they called me. It's that knowledge that's kept me alive in here all this time. How do I know this scheme of yours isn't a trick of Borold's? And if I told you that Borold intended that you should kill the winged creature? Pest! Tomorrow they're sacrificing her to Shat Matan. I knew there had to be a way out of that cave. Where do we go now? If you pick a heart, we head for the flowers. If you pick a spade, we head for the forest. Ah, there you are. Roland told me everything. All will be ready, just as you requested. Very well, and I am warning you. There's no need to worry, Master Borald. Have you ever had reason to complain of me? Everything will run smoothly, as it always has. I find this Shane to be increasingly strange. It may be time to dispatch him to the mines. Yes, but not before he's finished teaching me his tricks. You did well to move up the ceremony. She is still refusing to eat. Yes. <laughs> she can't be permitted to die of hunger before we've sacrificed her. <laughs> uh, this will throw those idiots into disarray. Yes, it's hardly the moment to back down. We must make these savages sit up and take notice. Their nostrils must be tickled by the rank odor of blood. <laughs> <laughs> Present you with a sacrifice worthy of you. The winged one, bring on the winged one. Bring on the winged one. You may rejoice, for you are about to die for the greater glory. Shackmaton! Prepare yourselves! Oh, Shackmaton! In just a few moments, your new servant shall prove his faithfulness to you! Do you accept him, O oh Shackmaton? Answer me! Do you accept Shekmaton? <laughs> Free the winged creature, or this lying monster is breathed his last! <laughs> Oh, 
Sauron orders you to come to the help of your high priest! This will throw those idiots into disarray? Yes, it's hardly the moment to back down. We must make these savages sit up and take notice. Their nostrils must be tickled by the rank odor of blood. <laughs> Do not listen! That is not the voice of Shekmaton! Do you hear your masters? They've been fooling you from the start! What an ingenious way it's been to keep these ignorant barbarians under our thumbs. Down with Boral! Down with Boral! Free Falcon! Yeah! And throw these filthy wretches into prison! Yeah! Traitor! Your reign is over, Ruland. You have restored our freedom to us. Thanks to you, Peace has returned to our village. Farewell, and have a safe journey. Joker! Ah, there you are, Commander! We've been looking for you for a good ten minutes! You've no idea what a fellow can accomplish in ten minutes. Depressing landscape. Needs a few camels. How could my uncle possibly survive in this barren desert? from the sky. still in an end case, so I expect to see some things that are out of the ordinary, but this... Outsiders! You've been found on the territory of the Emperor Hang. What of it? I've orders to take you as prisoners. Then you'll have to take us by force, you gang of wingless floating freaks! Capture them! Come on! Fight on the ground! Bunch of cowards! It was a gift from my chief. Very well, then you take us to your chief. I certainly hope you have your pilot's license.
We landing anytime soon? Emperor, we have captured the strangers. Very good, my friend. Very good. Real nice to meet you, Emperor Harang. <clears throat> Who are these ruffians? They claim to be from another world, Master Golo. Impossible. They are surely spies. My name's Bob Moran, and this is Sophia Paramount and Bill Ballantyne. And none of us are spies. We're searching for a friend of ours, Sir Edward Paramount. This man. Please tell us. Never seen him. And that tie? I suppose you've never seen that either. You can see it bears my uncle's initials. The Emperor is not a liar, young woman. What happened to you, my angels? Uh, <clears throat> they are tenacious fighters. Even though we haven't had a square meal in hours. That one especially. He has a most bewildering fighting style. Mr. Moran, I'd dearly love to see you in action. Corto! 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 You have to admit, he looks awfully strong. Mr. Moran, I am indeed impressed by your fighting techniques. Most impressed. Beginning from today, you will teach them to my angels. And if I refuse? Then your friend's fate may be a bit more unpleasant than the one which I have in store for them now. We've brought you reinforcements. Ricardo, look after them, and don't be afraid to work them. Especially Big Red there. What did he call me? My name is Ricardo Silva. Hi, I'm Sophia Paramount, and that's Bill Ballantyne. Tell me, do you know this man? Only young people work in the fields. You see, the work is very hard. That's enough chit-chat. Get to work, you idlers. You come down here and say that, you plucked pigeon. I'll teach you some better manners. <laughs> you mustn't provoke them. They make us work, but they protect us from Robin the Spectre. And who is that? Our sworn enemy. He rules the Black Angels who come at night to make off with our elders. And do they succeed? Too often, alas. You're half greatly disappointed, Emperor. Hang, Corto. You will be punished. But I... No, wait! I want Corto as a pupil. He's the most gifted of all your angels. It would be a shame to lose him. Request denied. He's been condemned by Emperor Hang. Then I refuse to teach you my art. By Hang. 
You dare to issue an ultimatum? You can take it or leave it. I shall speak to the Emperor. I must thank you for working so hard. I can see that you understand our situation. All I understand is that they treat you like slaves. Why don't you run away? And go where? On the other side of the walls lies the realm of Robin the Spectre. No one wants to fall into his clutches. Sorry, I'm just not buying the Spectre thing. Why aren't you working? Is a break now and then too much to ask for, my angel? Insolence! I shall be forced to report you to Golo! Ooh. Believe me, he's crushed tougher spirits than yours! You shouldn't have opposed him like that. I beg your pardon, Emperor. I'm terribly sorry. You clumsy fool, get out! Get rid of her. Karate is first and foremost a state of mind. Mastery of the self, both physical and mental. Who does this groundling think he is? He talks about mental mastery and he can't even fly. Mr. Moran beat me with his bare hands. I was at his mercy. He could easily have killed me. I see you're enjoying the night air, Commander. Good night, Mr. Moran. Till tomorrow. You can call me Bob. I hope you're hatching escape plans, Commander, because I've spread just about all the fertilizer I care to. A gentleman farmer like you should be right in his element. I'd prefer to help you out at the gym, like Sophia. Sophia? She's not with you? Well, now. Do you like your new job, my dear Miss Paramount? You might put a little bit more energy into it. Oh, why certainly if that's what you want, Emperor. Oh. Vary the rhythm of your blows. Let the impact set your energy free. Keep on like that and you're begging for a sprain. You must only use the fleshy part on the very edge of the hand. Tell me anything about Sir Paramount. He was captured two days ahead of you. Golo judged him too old to work in the fields. I don't know what became of him. What's going on? The groundlings have refused to work. They say that it's too hot. Well, if it isn't our old pal Golo, come take a dip. Cool yourself off. You too, unless you want your friends to pay in your stead. The Kyosho is not a blow like the Atami, but more of a pinching, or if you prefer, a spiral movement. <sighs> not so hard, Bob. You know how delicate I am. <laughs> <laughs> how much more time is it going to take for them to attain your level? One never finishes learning this art. Especially a crude idiot like our Corto. Stop harassing Corto. If all my pupils were as gifted as he, believe me, you'd have nothing to fear from your enemies. Those two are starting to be a little too close for my liking. What's going on? It's Florella, my wife. They kidnapped her while I was on guard duty. Robin the Spectre is struck again. You saw him? When someone disappears, it is always Robin the Spectre. My Florella. Please, you must help me find her. But I can't fly, Corto. I shall teach you. Enjoy your meal, Emperor Harang. You taste it first. Oh, 
Toronto is not in his niche. Thanks to this implant, you may now collect the magnetic energy emanating from the Hollow Mountain. I'll really be able to fly? If your capacity for concentration is great enough, yes. Now see if you can get off the ground. Fantastic! With just a little training, you'll fly like an angel. But take care. If they discover that you can fly, both of us will find ourselves in dire straits. Looking for something? We can't turn our backs for five minutes without you sticking your nose into our business. This is not good. Not good at all. I know that you're lying and that you know where my uncle is. If you're so dead set on seeing your uncle, it can be arranged. Commander? <laughs> so you're a dragonfly now? Sophia! Kidnapped by Robin the Spectre! Bob, not so fast! Where do you think they're going? We'll find that out soon enough. Source of your mysterious magnetic energy. Hanga and Golo drain the mental energy from these poor devils to enable you to fly. Are they dead? No, I don't think so. Florella! <laughs> Sir Paramount. Hang and Golo always told us the magnetic energy was produced by metal deposits under the mountain. They lied to you, as they did about Robin the Spectre, who exists only in Hang's evil schemes. But the Black Angel... A most brilliant deduction, gentlemen. You have amassed our secret. Your mental energy shall prove most useful to us. I am delighted that you jumped so willingly to the bait, Mr. Moran. I must know what manner of fish I'm dealing with. In a gesture of infinite generosity, our beloved Emperor Hang made an offer of hospitality to these three groundlings. Regrettably, they chose to betray his trust by putting themselves under hire to Robin the Spectre and handing over to him Corto and Florella. Bob Moran, you shall serve as an example to the Emperor Hang's people. You will undergo the trial of the Circle reserved specially for traitors of your species. In the Emperor's name, let justice be done!
was Hang and Golo who kidnapped Corto and Florella. They're being held prisoner along with hundreds of others. I saw them. What are you two waiting for? Should we believe her? Is it possible? She lies. Do not believe her. Come with me. Yes! So what you said is true. They have cruelly used us. My dear Sophia, I am so happy to see you again. Adieu, my friends. We must return to the world to which we belong. You have our thanks. Long live the new City of Angels! there'd be a reception in our honor with a band, champagne, and caviar, maybe? No, but all these rose asses we can't get through are driving me crazy. Look at this. I think I found something. <laughs> Mustn't move. Thing there was only one. What are these hideous creatures want with us? Sophia, look behind you! Come on, let's get out of here. Look, these things, this place is crawling with them. If it weren't for that lovely Rosas, we could be in the Grand Canyon. Yes, except we're not, because we're not on Earth, and your so-called lovely Rosasses are the Rosasses of Anke. I know that as well as you, Bill. 
Except I'm not going to pieces over it. Are you insinuating that I... Yes, I am, Mr. Ballantyne. Stop it, you two! We're all fed up with Anon K, but that's no reason to squabble among ourselves. Sophia's right. If we want to get out of here safe and sound, a healthy dose of self-control is in order. Lovely Rosas. Come, Father, you're going to catch cold. Oh, my darling, come on. The heavens have spoken once again. Look. Tomorrow, the seventh moon will be full, and then your great destiny will come to pass. Did you notice? There's a rosace in front of us. Till now, they've always been behind us, and we only see them after having passed through them. Maybe this is a whole different type of rosace. Maybe we can go through this one. Maybe we finally found a way out of here. Afraid not, Mr. Paramount. This rosace is just like all the other rosaces. That means there must be another door by which one can come here. And if there are two doors into this place, there may even be others. That's what we've got to find out. And if we do find other doors, that means we've arrived at the very center of Ananke. Where we'll keep going round and round in circles. Oh, Bill, you're such an optimist. Vultures are beginning to get on my nerves. Number eight. One rosas, more or less. Who cares? This isn't just any rosas, Bill. This is the one we came in by. We've come full circle to our starting point. Yeah, that's my point. We just going round and round. I think I'm beginning to understand how Ananke works. The rosas might just be a kind of geographical map of Ananke. So far, we've seen seven rosasses. Which implies the same number of doors on the far sides. Exactly. But that means we're trapped. If I understand what you're saying, Commander, there are seven doors that lead in, but only one leading out. If there's only one exit, the only place it can be is right here, at the center of Ananke. people were attempting to cross over, they must have had a good reason. Like a giant vacuum cleaner. I'm gonna try to get across. Let's do it, Bill. 
Sure, Commander. Whatever you say. Bob, be careful. This is a great day for Ananke. Glory to the hero. You have succeeded in completing the final trial, which has brought you to the very center of Ananke. I carried out the same exploit, lo, these many years ago. Your friends are now free to cross without any fear. My dear Bob, you have duplicated the great deed I carried out as a lad. Passing through all the gates to arrive at the center of Ananke. We'd appreciate it if you'd show us the way out now. Our hero deserves far better. What an exquisite place this is. It's paradise. I inherited these lands long ago, and I've lavished great care upon them. And here is the jewel of this paradise, the living memory of her mother. My daughter, Colombe. Colombe, this is the man through whom all the astrological predictions will be fulfilled. Your hair is the color of dancing fire. Uh, Colombe, nice name you got. It really suits you. Thank you. My name's William, but you can call me Bill. Come on. The feast is ready. Everything looks scrumptious. <coughs> Please excuse my father. He's very ill. I fear I have very little time left to live. Will you excuse me, father? I'm not hungry. My poor dear daughter. She is so terribly young and fragile. Nonetheless, she is to succeed me. To succeed you? Have you not yet understood? When I'm gone, Colombe and her consort will rule Ananke. <laughs> For many years, the heavens have been predicting the coming of a man possessing unparalleled strength, unmatched courage, and exceptional intelligence. That is why, for a long time, trials have been placed along the roads which lead here. And after a wait of many years, the Chosen One has appeared at long last, on the day of the seven full moons, exactly when the star said he would. And who is this lucky fellow? Why, it's you! Bob Moran, you will wed Colomb, and together you'll rule Ananke. It looks like... Why, yes, it's the Paramount. That means the Masters of Ananke knew of the existence of your diamond. Listen to me, Goran. I have absolutely no intention of remaining in Ananke, and neither do my friends. It is your destiny. There is no other way out. I'm going to rejoin Colomb. Sir Paramount, 
I think it's time I return this to you. The Paramount. I thought it was lost forever. But this is wrong. He is not the one you are going to marry. It's the other one. I know, Father, but... You cannot! You have no right to defy your own destiny. Enough, old man. Leave the girl some breathing room. So what if Bill's the one she prefers? What's that in your hands? This is sacrilege! It is unholy to bring the Ananke inside these sacred walls. Give it to me! The Ananke? No, we won't. This diamond belongs to Sir Paramount. Mr. Gorin, I understand how you feel. You're old and ill, but we'll never bow to your law. My life is elsewhere, and in spite of your opposition, I promise you we'll find a way out of here. Come on, let's go. Cologne, come with me. Oh, that's impossible, Bill. I cannot abandon my father. You will never leave a Ananke. No, father, not that! you're holding, the Ananke, happens to be the key you need to leave our universe. Or the key that will destroy us. Kalom! Tell me how this key works. The center! We must find our way to the center! Then let's hurry! now at the exact center of Ananke. If you persist in your decision, this is where it all ends. But... that's us! Unbelievable! I'm going to need the key. Please, give them your diamond, Sir Paramount. Well, after all, it is to blame for bringing us here. It's only right it also bring us out. No! I cannot touch the Ananke. Only one who has passed through all the doors and has overcome all the obstacles may touch it.
dearest Colomb, the time has come for you to spread your wings and fly on your own. I will make Ananke a better world. I promise you. I fear the heavens led us down the wrong path. There will always be men who are courageous enough to defy destiny. Freedom. 